Hello everyone. So we're going to go over chapter two, which is the neutral zone counters and regroups. So before we start, I just want to explain something. So obviously in the last chapter, we went over breakouts. So you got to make sure you understand that before going into this, because they build each chapter builds on each other. And then we go in the season, we have to apply these concepts to the ice. And then we apply them in the games, obviously, to ensure success. So before we go in, I want you to think about where's the neutral zone? Uh, what does it even mean? What are regroups? What are counters? So the neutral zone is in the middle part of the rink. So as we can take a look here, it's the shaded area. So it's always the center of the ice right here. That's the neutral zone right here, that shaded area. And the neutral zone determines the direction of the play based on puck possession and positioning. So the neutral zone is very, very the most critical one in the game because it really determines which play how the play is going to go. And if you cause turnovers there, that's not a good sign. So you must have to battle there. You have to gain puck possession there. So usually when they're in the neutral zone, our team, so let's just say our goalie is down here. That's our defensive zone. If they're walking over the line, you do not want them to cross this line. Okay, you want to get that puck in this area and then go down the ice. So two types of attacks in the neutral zone is number one, a rush. That's a continuation of the breakout. So Remember our breakout. So we have the defenseman's always getting back first. The wingers are on the boards here, and the center is curling, and the other D is in front of the net. So that D makes a pass to the winger, and then while the center curls, the winger gives a pass, and then they go. That's the breakout. Okay. So it's the break, and then you cause a rush from that breakout. So you do not want to turn over the puck in the central zone. You want to make sure you gain the puck and keep the puck on your stick. Um, and the second one is regroups and counters. So puck possession in neutral zone usually results from a turnover or face off, like I said. It's important to move through the neutral zone quickly and catch the opposition behind the play. So you do not want to move slow in this part of the ice. You want to be as quick as you can. Get the puck, steal the puck. Advancing the puck through the neutral zone off face off is more challenging due to opposition being aligned above the puck. So when you're taking a faceoff in either of these dots, you've got to make sure you win them to get puck possession because if we lose it in the neutral zone, they're going to have a good chance of coming back in our zone and getting a good scoring opportunity and a shot. So it just depends. They could get a rebound. They could get whatever. So we got to protect our goalie at all times, and we must steal the puck here. We cannot let them come in our zone. We always have to steal the puck in this zone and go in the offensive zone. So counters. So you might be asking, what are counters? So counters are, it requires speed while regroups are more controlled. So what this means is you have to use all of the speed. Now, regroups are controlled. Yes, we have to work in that technique. But guess what? We have to be quick on this too. And teams counter quickly when the opponent isn't set up in a neutral zone for check. So that means... Uh, we know what the neutral zone and then the four check we'll get into. That's when the team pressures, like kind of like the breakout situation. So we got to make sure we're quick on that. We do not want to give them enough time to set up that four check on us. Uh, quick counters often result in odd man rushes. So what this means okay, is we have to be quick. It's kind of counters and regroups are kind of the same thing, but you have to make sure we're quick on this because we can get in the offense, offensive zone quickly. If we're too slow, our opposition will steal the puck and they'll come in our zone and generate a shot. Most get will get a scoring opportunity. Um, so the purpose to encounter this is to catch the opposition moving toward the offensive zone and then quickly pass the puck up the forwards and hopefully get an odd man rush. So this is where, like I said, you have the neutral zone is very important because we have to steal that puck. We cannot let them walk in our defensive zone. And then we kind of work with a breakout like a little breakout regroup thing, which I'll, we'll talk about more. And um, so they go D to D pass, and then you go up to the wing. You got to look for time and space, and you got to look for whoever's open to create that odd man rush. So in counters, there's a 50% of this process. So we have a 50% being concerted, a very good transition team. So usually teams have to be good on the transition, like moving up the ice quickly. That's what it means. So we, if someone's come, if our opposition is coming back, we must adapt quickly and steal the puck. And 50% is past being com confronted by pressure. From this puck, the puck here, he needs to look for a play or dump the puck in the offensive zone, then use the forecheck. So like I said, 
Many of you probably don't know what a four check is, but we're gonna explain it when we get closer. There's a chapter on it, but I'll show you on the board what this means. So what we, we need to steal the pass, we need to steal the pass from the other team and we need to get the puck and then we create our own regroup and then we go in the offensive zone. And then when a puck carry is confronted out of space to carry the puck, there are only two options, dump the puck and chip behind pressure. So I'll show you what the counter is. Okay. So as we look at this board, right, this part right here is the neutral zone. Okay, so let's just say our goalie is down here for an example. That's our defensive zone. I'll put D. Okay, so our opposition are the O's here. So if we have somebody pressure, get that puck, then our D are back here. We can pass back to our D. They can make a D to D pass. And then we can look, we have to look. So F1, F2 is pressuring F3, just for an example. So we have to look who's open on the F1, F2, or F3. Okay, and that's how we have to be, we have to be quick on this and then get that puck back. That's what it's saying, being a considered good transition team. And we am the 50% of being confronted by pressure. So we're putting pressure on them. So when it talks about the puck or the two options, uh, when the puck carrier is confronted out of space. So when we steal that puck, we have two options. And we'll explain the four check a little more when we get closer. So, okay. The dump, in, the dump the puck in, so we always got to make sure we're, we cross that red line before we can do that, because if we don't, that will be called icing, and then we have to come all the way back down in our own zone, okay? So we can dump the puck in the corner, we can go get it, and I'm not going to explain the full four check just yet, because that chapter is coming. And if you have the puck, so here's their 2D, here's their forwards, 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 okay? If you don't have enough room, chip it behind and go around. Okay, go around the D get, to get that puck and then go in. So we wanna make sure we do that process because if we do that, we can get the puck. And if we're quick on it, then uh, we'll be successful. But in games, typically we cannot be slow of doing this because they, our opponents will get the puck and we would cause a lot of turnovers as a result. So we don't wanna do that. So we have the cross corner dumping. So as we take a look, I'll show you right here. So it forces the defensive team to switch coverage from one side of the ice to the other. And opponent, our opponents may lose defensive position. So it's kind of like that stretch play a little bit, but with the D, but we're not doing this exact same thing. The D will get caught in this and then we will put a lot of pressure on them. It gives us, the offensive team, a chance to get the puck first. And it ensures that the puck goes in an area where the goalie can't play it. And uh, the goalie usually tries, or we have to try to place it in the corner to de develop the play there. So we don't, remember how we talked about the rim? So we don't want to rim it all the way because it will come all the way back up. So here's F1, here's F2. Okay, so we got to make a play. So we got to envision where our other teammates are on the ice. So if there's a forward up here, we got to dump it in to this corner right here. F2 goes, gets it, okay, and we'll develop that play in the offensive zone. We do not want to rim it again. We can't rim it. Okay, in this play, F1 has to, you notice how he or she has to cross the red line, which is right here, and then they can dump it in. If we dump it in where he or she is right here and we dump it in, guess what? That's going to be called an icing, and then we have to come back and take a face off. But we want to make sure we, we take a look first before we dump to see if F2 or F3, in this scenario, there's only two forwards because F3 is staying back. Um, and we'll move up with them, but we got to make sure F1 dumps that puck in where F2 envisions to go. So we got to take a look to make sure our man's over there. And then we cross the red line and then we dump the puck in. So we have a hard wide rim dumping. So in this scenario, like I talked about in the last one, we don't want to rim it. So what we want to do is the puck carrier, which is F1, okay, shoots the puck in the zone so it rims around the boards and comes up the wide side for the wide winger to retrieve. Um, the rim must be hard enough so the goaltender cannot stop it behind the net because guess what? If it's not rimmed around the boards well, guess what? The goalie will stop it. And if it's not hard, the goalie again will stop it and um, they will get an offensive opportunity to do the breakout. And it will make our job harder because we'll have to back check. And it's a difficult play for the winger because the winger needs to stop the puck, protect it, and look for a play. So the winger can either get on the board, shrug the boards, stop it with the skate. You've got to stop the puck from 
going past you. So in this case, like F1, okay, envisions, looks over there for his or her partner, okay, then when F1 dump, crosses the red line, dumps it in, F2's got to hustle his or her butt to that corner to stop the puck, but F1 enters the zone here. Okay, so remember, F1, if you add the puck, you have to cross this line first, then you can rim it around the boards. F2, you got to make sure that puck crosses the blue line first or it'll be an offside, okay? But you want to hustle and get there and stop that puck to develop that play. And by that, we can get a scoring opportunity and we can set up in the offensive zone. So we have the same side dumping. So in this play, um, the main goal is to have the puck stop in the near corner. Okay, so we don't want to rim it around the boards like we did. We want to put it in the nearest corner where we are. And when pressured in the neutral zone, the puck carrier lays the puck behind pressure, shooting it into the near corner for a supporting teammate. So we don't, don't shoot as hard as you can. Just dump it. Make sure it goes in that corner down here. Okay, make sure it's in this corner. You got to make sure you cross that red line again and make sure. Okay, because they're D. Okay, here's their D. They're going to pressure us right here. So you got to make sure you put that in that corner nicely. And the opposing D needs to stay up on the puck carrier. So that's, um, they, like I said, they'll be forechecking and pressuring you to make that play. And by doing this, ensure supporting offensive forward to obtain the puck first. And the puck carrier has enough speed to go around the D and get the puck first. So what happens is what we want to do, okay, so you have to communicate and you've got to envision. So first of all, you got to cross the, you got to look to see if, your partner's over here, your line mate. Okay, then you come in, skate, and then you dump the puck in. So you, you either go get it, okay? In this play, F1 go gets the puck, dumps it in, and F2 comes and supports, and then F3 needs to stay high, okay? So F1, you got to hustle your butt to get there, whoever you are. That's the puck carrier, okay? If you're pregame pressure at the D, make sure you chip it in here. F2, if F1 decides to stay back, then you got to acknowledge the fact you have to go in, and then F1 will come support you, and then F3 will stay high. Okay, putting the puck on the net, dumping. So this is very important, and I used a lot of this throughout my high school career. Um, so the main goal is it catches the goal, goalie by surprise and forces him and her to make a play. So a lot of sometimes in the NHL, which is a National Hockey League, or in any any other hockey uh, leagues, a lot of players do this because the goalies won't expect it. Goalies have trouble stick handling and passing the puck. A lot of them do, so it's a good opportunity to make sure you put that puck on the net because it could go in. And you, if you hustle to get to the play, it could force the play to stop, and then we get an offensive face off there, and we can set up and get a scoring opportunity. And it's, it forces the opposing D to hurry back and retrieve a below average pass from the goalie to start the breakout. So that way we're going to use our four check going in here. Um, and it's a good strategy to use when the goalie is following this pattern um, because goalies won't expect it like I just mentioned a few times. Goalies are forced to, stop, forced to shoot the puck into the corner, which that way we can F2 in the scenario would go get the puck. If it's in this corner, F1 would go get it. And it's very difficult for the D to play the puck and it's beneficial to the forechecking team because what happens is the D, it's going to take longer for them to set up and process that play. So they're, they have to make sure that, you know, like we talked about, they'll use their shoulders to look. But it's going to be difficult when we put that hard pressure on them. And it just generates possible rebounds. So if we come in, just dump it right there, F2 could come in and slam it in the net. And it's a good chance of recovering the puck and generating a shot in that for a possible goal. So I'll show you the play. So here's F1. He skates in. Got to make sure F1's got to cross the blue line before everyone else on our team can cross the blue line. Because if F2 crosses before F1, the puck carrier comes in, and that's an offside. So let's just say F1 skates in, looks for the pad, or okay, looks for the far pad, takes, takes a shot, the puck comes out, F2 needs to rush at the same time they can get a rebound. And we'll work on this in practice a lot. Um, just make sure you could even just flip it in, okay, from right here. Try that maybe. But in this case, we want to make sure we're using the rebound strategy. Um, so in this case, you know, make sure F1 comes in the blue line first. Look for that far pad, F1, whoever has the puck. And then F2, make sure you get to the net while he or she does that because it will generate a rebound and then we could get a good 
good chance of scoring. All right, so odd man rushes and breakaways. So we talked a, lot, a little bit about this yesterday um, or the last chapter in the breakout, the breakout, but we have two options here. So these usually result in an odd man rush or a breakaway. So two aspects. So the D, defense recognitions of options quickly. So our D must, our D when we're breaking out of the zone too and coming out of the zone and regrouping, we got to ensure that we look before we start the play. And when we carry the puck, we got to play it quick. We can't, we can't just force a pass. We got to make sure we see who our, which teammates are open. So for an example, I'll show you on the diagram here. Okay, so let's just say our D picks up, okay? Our D's has the puck. Okay, say F1 is way up here, for an example, okay? And F2 is right here, F3, okay? If there's two four checkers, if we catch them down low, okay, these, they're going to be open. The 2D will be here. F1 could literally come around here and do that like we talked about, and D1 could make a long pass and they can get a breakaway. Okay, that's very important because if we use that stretch play, it's called, usually called stretch plays, um, we can get a good scoring opportunity because goalies are afraid to go one-on-one. -on -one. Um, they're afraid to go one-on-one -on -one with each other with the opposition. And forward stretch, skating in the stretch area with time and speed. So you got to make sure when, if we're going to set up this play, whoever's going to do it, you got to make sure that the timing's right and you have to use your speed to generate that speed to go in for the breakaway. And what the stretch area is, the stretch area is an open space as far away from the puck carry as the skater can go without going, without going off set. So we got to make sure, like I say, if the four checkers are coming, okay, uh, we got to make sure that we are playing the puck. We're calm. We cannot be afraid to play the puck. We got to look for opening, and it has to come with the right time and space. And getting behind the defense and looking for a breakaway pass is very important because the D are so focused on our whoever has the puck. So if we can sneak behind those D, make that stretch pass, we're in for a goal. And forwards need to look for a high middle area between the opposing D to open up. And when a teammate is ready, the pass needs to be made at the appropriate time quickly. So I'll explain these two diagrams. These are two options, okay? So number one, sorry about this part, but so D1 skates, okay? Sees F1 generate speed from the zone. So F1's going to make a pass there. So you see these D, they're covering F2, and this D over here is covering F3. So F1's going to be, well, going to be covered, but whoever's covering F1 is usually going to be, you know, forward checking in right here, forward checking this D. So that leaves F1 open. So what we can do is make that pass. D2 is going to make a little play here and make that pass. And when F1 gains that speed, he or she will come in with that speed and keep increasing it and score. See that, that D using the speed will catch these D off and it will have no time for them to come back. So example, another one too. So F2, okay, so D1 is kind of playing. F2 sneaks behind these D, can make a pass right here, and then F2 is alone. That's easy. And these D will struggle to get back because they won't generate that speed that F2 has. And F, our, the four checkers that are on us, the opposition, um, they won't have enough time to get back. I mean, they'll try, but they're not going to catch our player, with, which is F2 in this scenario, because he or she has already generated enough speed get that breakaway and generate a scoring opportunity. So benefits to act um, benefits to activating the D in the neutral zone. So it provides us more passing options. Okay, like we just saw the stretch play. Okay, it provides a D that provides us with one more player to cover, often confusing um, the other opposition's defensive system. It prepares the attack to have a late or mid-ice threat from the D. And having a D in the play uh, often backs up the opposing D, which gives the puck carry extended time to skate or make a decision. So that's where we were talking about with that stretch play in the last, last diagram. Okay, so the, this is the neutral zone, right? So our D are here. Okay, they can come up, and when our forwards are open, 
I mean, we're going to get covered, but we can have to look. These D right here, whoever has the puck out of these two, have to look and see which forwards are open. If not, the D could skate up. If they have enough room, go in. Uh, one of the forwards comes back. Um, the D could dump it in. We can use the four chuck to go in. So we got to – using our D is very important because it opens up space and time, which allows us – we can get more stretch plays into that, and it can rush up, could involve our D uh, going up the ice as well which is very important. Sorry. Um, so we have a backside option. So that's when the D sees the pass being made on the strong side and jumps back and jumps back to the side to look for a pass or enters the zone as a late option. And when D2 is active, D1 needs to move to mid ice position in case of a breakdown. So a breakdown means that the puck is turned over. we got to have someone prepared to be back there to defend. Because if we have a breakdown, we turn that puck over, guess what? They're going to have a breakaway. So I'll show you an example. All right, like we said, D2 is that backside. D looking, he's, he or she's going up. They're generating that speed. Okay, D1's making the play. So they can either, look, they could either pass the F1 who's open. They can come in, okay? Or they could come in, skate up with it, pass it D2, and D2 is in. It just depends on the situation. Now, if we're using the F1 situation, D can make a move, make a pass to F1 here. Okay, F1 could go for that rebound. When we talk about the goal and that D2 comes in and plays. Or maybe D1, okay, makes a little move, skates, pass it D2, and D2 is on a breakaway. And that will provide us a good scoring opportunity because we generate more speed from our opponents in this situation. And it, speed is hard to control and it's hard to generate when you don't, when our, so for an example, you know how we're generating, this D2 right here is generating speed. The T, our opponents are not going to be able to build up that speed quickly like we did because we started before them. And it's going to be hard for them to defend that speed. So the pass and go. So usually in this play, the D recognizes after he or she passes up the strong side, the forward will need an option right away. So the forward will need to move in the opening for a potential inside play. So when D1 activates, D2 must stay in mid-ice and behind the play. So usually right here, okay, so D1 makes the play. So D1 could skate, okay, and then F1 can go. Okay, or usually in this scenario, D2 need to stay back. Okay, so if D1 makes a fake pass and just skates, okay, they could do that. Or D1 can make a pass, go to F1 here, and F1 can go on the zone. Or if D1, okay, D1 fakes a little bit, F1 moves in a little more, makes a pass, goes in. D2 could rush up. Now, this defenseman wants to make sure, you know, the farthest they can go, it just depends if our forwards are up here, okay. This D wants to stay back, be the quarterback, because we can't have anybody in this space okay, of the opposition, because if we do, we're going to leave our goal time to the dry, and guess what, they're probably, they may score, they may they'll have a good possibility of scoring, and we don't want to do that. So we have the mid-ice two-on-one, okay, so the mid-ice two-on-one is when the center get, when the center gets the puck low, the opposite D moves and through mid-ice, okay, so in this position, it, it creates a close supporting option for the puck carrier, and D2 remains back in the mid ice to be there for a possible turnover. So I'll explain this to you. So D2, okay. Now the center, okay, the opposite D, okay, here's our center right here. So our D1, okay, we have a passing option. So this center right here, now, this center right here is going to look to go up, okay? Um, that's our team. Okay, so it's going to skate up. So D2, when that center is curving to generate that speed, D2 can make that pass to him or her, okay? But D1's also open, so maybe D2 gives it the center, and the center can make a quick play, the D1, and they're in, okay? And then th these two are on a two-on-one, okay? Now, because both of them are generating speed, that's why. And the, every, the opposition's players are going to be attracted to that puck, so they're going to be chasing that. So D2 must stay back. He cannot, he or she cannot move forward. And give a pass to the center, and then the center could skate up with it, and that D comes along, and then guess what? They're a two-on-one. So that's what we want to look for, too, when it's open. 
So regroups. So re what regroups are, it's a more effective way that, to break through the neutral zone and enter the offensive zone. And most teams will set a four check in the neutral zone to try to prevent teams from successfully regrouping and gaining puck possession. And before we play, we, we must know our opponent's four check they are using. So obviously we will look the coaches and all the players will have to acknowledge the fact in the beginning of the game a couple times what four checking system are they using that we'll talk about in the four checking chapter. And by doing this, it helps identify what regroup options are available. So we can we can use the ones we're going to be talking about and going against their um, four chalk. So we got to evaluate each one, which one's going to work with their four chalk they're using. And there's two regroup patterns. It's called a lane regroup and motion regroups. And both groups are effective against all types of four check, four, excuse me, all types of four checking pressure. And the difference is the center stays in the middle or does he or she have the freedom to swing wide in exchange with the wingers? Okay. So we'll talk about that when we get there, but you got to know these two. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. So as we talk about, okay, we just talked about the two lane and motion, remote lane and motion. Okay. So this is the lane right here. Okay. Letter A, that's the lane. So we're taking a look. So D is going to skate up. Let me get my pointer out here. Okay. D1 is going to skate up. Act like he or she is going to skate up and then make a quick pass to D2. So D2 has the option of, you know, skating up with the puck. Or you see that center curl can make that pass up there. Okay. Or sees that left winger and makes that pass up there. It just depends who's going to be there. Okay. So we'll have to see whoever's available is who you pass puck to. If you don't see anyone available, this defense will have to skate up and dump it in. And then we have the motion regroup. So we these one skates up, okay, passes it to D2. And then D2 has two passing options. So the center could either, okay, the center's either going to curl here, okay, or they make the pass, D2 will make the pass here, or the center will keep going up, skating, and D2 will look for that long pass. So it just depends when that center is open. So that's the lane regroup or the motion, excuse me. So lane regroups, okay. So this is usually like a setup of a breakout in the neutral zone, but we're not in our defensive zone. So the D1 gets the puck just inside the blue line and turns it up quickly by passing to the left wing or the center. And the first option, because speed is in transition, usually results in odd man rushes. And the quick up play does not give up the opposition time to set up a trap. So a trap is when they, it's like a defensive coverage system. So that's when they're in position and they eliminate your space you come in. So they won't be able to come in. And one, one team in the NHL that does, extremely does this well, um, there's a couple of the Boston Bruins does this well, the St. Louis Blues especially. Um, and there's teams like the Sabres, you know, Sabres, Ottawa Senators, those low teams, that's why they're struggling because they, they leave so much room in their defensive zone. Um, and you can't, we can't do that. So the right wing stretches on the wide side and then supports across the ice when the pass is made. So as long as, so let me get my pointer out here. So we can hopefully. So, so this is the quick up, okay? So the quick up, okay, so you gotta, we obviously got to be quick. So the right wing will be skating up here, and then when they see that play happen. So D2 will curl, okay, so generating that speed. So if D2 two needs to get involved with the man, rod, odd man rush, he can't, he or she can. So D1 will turn, make that pass either the left wing, whoever's open, or the center that's scrolling here. And then the left wing, center, and the right wing have to be prepared to go in the zone. Three, okay, three on two. It just depends, and then we have back checkers, and then these D must Im get involved in the offensive zone. That's where the max they can be at, but they got to be aware that the our opposition can be back here as well. So when so there's another lane regroup, which is called the D to D stretch. So when D one receives the puck in the strong side, option to take away, he or she immediately needs to pass the puck to his or her partner. And after that pass is made, D1 needs to sink back 
to mid ice to protect his or her partner in case of a turnover and also needs to provide an option for D2. Then D2 passes up to the right wing, who is in a stretch position by the far blue line, or to the, to the center in mid ice, which is neutral zone. Okay, and once the pass is made, the left wing moves to support them. Okay, so I'll show you the play. So D1, okay, so D1 after that pass is made, D1, so D1 skates, makes that pass and turns here, stops, okay. D2 moves up in the play, okay, gets that puck, okay, and makes the pass to the center if it's available because that, that center is generating speed, or to pass to the right wing and a chip in or a dump in and they can use the four check. It just depends how much open space there is. And then that left wing is gonna move in for support. So it could get a rebound here or it could get a pass and take a quick shot. And then we have the lane regroups, the D to T flat pass. Okay, so what this is, is D1 passes to D2 and then that opposition takes away his or her passing options to the right wing or the center. So they're gonna to try to do that. And D2 passes across the left wing who sinks low into the open seam. Okay, and this option is not usually available when the opponents do the one, two, two, four check. No mock centers leaving the back side open. And we won't, you, most of you probably don't know what the one, two, two, four check is, but we will talk about that in the four check in chapters and so don't worry about it right now. And when D2 receives the puck for, or receives the pass from D1, he or she moves up ice and looks to make a play up the boards or to the center. And from this, it opens up a wide side to the left wing and the pass must be made flat across because the diagonal pass might be interpreted. And that way it gives the opposition to come in our zone and we don't want to do that. So I'll just explain. So D2 skates back with the puck, turns, and then makes a quick pass to D2. So D2 can skate up will make that long flat pass to the left winger, okay? And that left winger could either skate in, dump it in, and when that center is generating speed, maybe the left wing can pass it to the center and the center comes in and then the right wing follows. So it just depends. And maybe, because that right wing's not gonna have enough speed. The, in this case, the center is gonna have more speed than any of the three forwards, the left wing or the right wing. So the centers definitely have the more speed because he or she is generating it more quicker and more earlier. And the left wing is just turning here. So that pass is made, and then it could get a get go and make that pass. Or the left wing could chip it in, go get it, and the center can go get it. Or the left wing could dump it in, and the center goes in first and gets the puck from the four chuck. So we have the, another lane regroup, which is called the hinge play. So the hinge play is when D1 passes the D2, and then D1 slides back to mid ice to support his or her partner and D2 moves up the ice and looks to make a pass. And if there's no options available, D2 passes back to D1, who is behind it in mid ice, so which is neutral zone. D1 then moves the puck quickly to the left wing as the primary option or to the center, depending on the situation. So if the left wing's open, you make the pass there. If the center's open, you make the pass there. If the left wing's not open, you make the pass to the center. And if the, left, the center's not open, you make the pass to the left wing. Now, what happens if they're not open? Well, you're going to have to look for the right wing and they're going to have to chip it in and you'll get it. Um, or it could skate it in. It just depends if there's enough time and space to go in the zone. And when D1 moves the puck to D2, he or she has the option to drop back deeper and perform a skating hinge. So that's a turn and a big wide turn. Okay. And supporting D moves back uh, into the play behind a play and prepares to jump in the hinge pass with speed while catching the opponent off guard. So you can't make it obvious that you're gonna go up in the zone. You've gotta be prepared to do that and you've gotta make it secretive. Think, think of the play and then communicate. Now you don't wanna say, I'm going up, I'm going up. Okay, you guys gotta acknowledge that's where the, quick, the, the, the game's gonna be a little quick and it's gonna be confusing a little bit, but we will get this down pat. And the skating hedge allows defensemen to obtain room to gain speed, time to read the play, the ability to draw and a checker and move the puck up to the best option. So you go to the next slide here. I think there's a diagram, I hope. Yep, so here's a couple of the plays. Okay, so as we take a look, so this is the first option. So D2 makes that turn, passes, okay, passes up or passes over D2. D2 moves up while D2 moves up or D1 moves up a little bit, stops, okay. 
Now here, this is where the chart's a little confusing. So D1 can either skate, make that pass D2, D2 can rush, or D1 can move up here quickly and, okay, and make that pass either the left wing. So what the chart's telling you is D1's gonna skate, okay, to D2. D2 is gonna move up, so D2 has the option of making that pass back to the D1, okay, and that D1 has to stay here, and that D1's either gonna pass it to the winger, the right, the center, or back to D2 because D2's getting that speed. So it just depends. Um, in this scenario, you usually don't want the D2 to go up because you don't want four people in the offensive zone down low. So D2 is going to end up staying back, okay, faking that play. So usually the left wing, the center, and the right wing want to go in, and the, the center can get, gain speed, come in, and that right wing can crash the net. And then in this play, Okay, D2 is going to make that skating hinge, okay, or D1, excuse me. D1 is going to make the pass and then make that hinge, skate up. D2 is going to end up passing back, skating up, and then passing back to the D1. And then D1 is going to rush it up. And D1 can make that pass to the center who has enough speed, the left wing, that either can chip or dump and chase. And that right wing is there for support, okay. So... Just make sure both in both of these scenarios, the D has to stay back, but there's something else. If that D needs to rush up, they may have to, and that right way may have to scoop back. It just depends on the situation with time and space. And then we have the center stretch as a lane regroup. So when D1 makes a pass to D2 um, in the neutral zone, C supports low. Okay, that center always has to support. And once that puck is passed back to the D1 or the left wing, the center has the option of returning it lower, moving into the high mid stretch area for a potential breakaway pass. So as we take away, as we look here, so D1's making that pass uh, to D2, D2 skating, while D1's skating a little bit and making that, that, that pass back to D1. And D1 has the option of passing it to the center who has enough speed, okay? That's another option, or to the left wing, so the D1 can pass at center, the center goes in. Okay, the center could go in for a breakaway or set it up, or D1 can pass it to the left wing who can pass it to the center who has enough speed. So in any scenario, the center is gonna have the puck, right wing comes in support, so it'll stay high, and then that left wing will crash, to or right wing will crash, and that left wing will usually stay back. Um, and this is an effective way to lose your check and split the opponent's D because they're gonna get so confused of this because with all the speed, speed is the key in these because if we don't use speed, we're, these are not gonna work. And we will practice the concepts and practice and throughout the year and stuff, just every practice will practice these and work on them and each time we'll get a little faster. And we have the chip behind pressure. So what this does is most teams use tight checking systems like we said because it, they wanna make it hard for us to enter the offensive zone. And there's not a lot of room in the neutral zone either. So usually they come up and forecheck, but also in this play, they're not forechecking too much. They want you to try to come in the zone. They're trying to tighten that gap, the room and space. They want to take away your time and space. So that's why we have to be quick and smart and make sure we're making plays in our defensive zone to open them up. Then we get the puck off the ice so we don't cause turnovers. And when it passes, being made through the neutral zone, it's very important the reserve has quick and close support. So always close support. You always have to have support. If you don't have support, it causes a lot of turnovers. And the pass receiver is confronted, the player has the option of chipping the puck behind the space and behind the checker, or the support player can anticipate and get the puck first, get to the puck first. And the center must be the player who is ready to support the chip. Okay, the center must be ready to support the chip. If the center's not ready, guess what? That causes a turnover, and they're going to get the regroup, and they'll come down their zone and try to get a generate a shot. And usually it's hard, but in that scenario, we have to be prepared to make that tight gap in the neutral zone so it's hard for them to come in. Because we, we don't even want them to cross this red line. We don't. We want to keep them in their own zone, and we want to use the four check. So in this scenario, as I just talked about, D1 will make a pass to D2. So D2 will skate up a little bit and make that pass to the right wing. So that D in that zone is going to pressure that right wing. So the right wing is going to have to bank it off the boards. That's where the center comes in, picks up the puck, and then left wing will come in. So there, there could be a possibly a two-on-one right there. So if the center can either make a pass to the left wing. They can make a touch-touch pass, but we got to make sure it's not by the D because it'll intercept that pass. 
or we can take a center can take a blank shot of the rebound and then the left wing can slam it home. And then we have the defensive support mid ice in the lane regroup. So in this scenario, when pass is being made by a defenseman to a forward in the neutral zone, the passing D needs to be ready to move up mid ice and support the attack. So the D will have to move up in this play. Okay, so D2, which is partner of D1, needs to remain in a strong center ice position behind the attack. So we always have got to have that quarterback like we talked about. D1 needs to be ready, or needs to, sorry, D1 needs to read quality of puck possession to determine how far to move up and how quickly. So as we take a look here, the center's going to, the right wing's curling, the center's getting net speed to come in and support. Okay, and then as we take a look, the D can either make a pass We'll make the pass to the left wing, then we'll skate up with the zone. But usually that right wing in this scenario, or the left wing, it just depends. Um, usually in this scenario, we want the left wing to stay back because the, these players are close, but the left wing will provide support. The right wing will come in, make a screen, or look for a rebound, and then the center will come in as well to dig for that puck, that loose puck. D, D2. Okay, we'll be moving up a little bit when you get off of the zone, but D2's responsibility is not to go by the net is to watch this area and make and stay at this blue line. So we're providing passing options up here, but D2 also needs to ensure that no one's back here. So D2 and the left wing in the scenario will be at the blue line here, defending this area. So if someone from their team goes up, then whenever D moves back um, and covers that man or woman. And uh, the right wing, like I said, right wing center, and the D1 will be in the zone trying to score. Okay. And this is a little confusing play, but left wing needs to ensure we cannot have four players down one because we can't leave one back because that'll cause a lot of on man rushes and we don't want to do that. We got to be careful. And then we have the strong side motion regroup and a wide side motion regroup. Okay. So I'll explain these right here. So these are just a couple diagrams. So I'll explain how these work. So D2 is always in the position, so in this scenario, D2 is going to be back. D1 is going to skate, make the pass either to the right wing who's generating speed or the center that's generating speed. And um, D1 is going to make sure, you know, they stay back. So this looks like a four-on-four -four scenario in this position because the left wing's not even here. So, so D2 and so D1 will skate up a little bit, push the opponents back to make them you know, ner not nervous necessarily, but just make sure and be prepared because they're going to try to eliminate that gap in space, but we have to use speed. And then we'll have the option of passing to the right wing who's generating speed, who can go in and then the center. And then we have a two on two going in. And then our D will move up into the play, but also ensure no one's back here cherry picking or looking for that stretch play. In this scenario, okay, our D1 turns, avoids the four check, and then we'll make a passing option to the left wing Okay, or to the right wing. So the right wing can chip it in if there's enough pressure or dump it in and we can use the four check or skate it in if there's enough room or it depends on the left wing and who comes in. And then that center will generate speed to come back behind that left wing. So if the left wing comes in can make a pass and then boom, and then that. These D need to make sure, again, they can stay up here, cover the, be at the blue line for a point shot and also ensure no one's back here covering and protecting our zone. So we have a couple of motion groups. So motion group is a quick up. So that's when the D1 gets the puck just inside the blue line and turns it up quickly by passing to the, either the left wing or the right wing near the boards. Who's near the boards, excuse me. And the center swings to that side. An exchange between the center and race, right wing must be made quickly in order to provide immediate support for D1 because that will confuse the opponents. That will make more space to open. So let's take a look. Because usually this is the center's job but they're switching. So they have to do it at the same time. So usually, okay, so D1. Okay, so D1 turns, D2's here, just being prepared for maybe a pass if there's enough four check, but usually in this scenario, we can big out the boards of the left wing. But usually we can pass it to the left wing, we can pass it to the right wing comes in, or we could pass it, D2 turns, passes to the right wing, and that center's gaining the speed. So these two players are gaining speed while the left wing's gonna cover up here well, cover here in the high slot, right wing and center will be down low, okay? And then the D will be at the point and they can take a shot. So remember, D1's gonna make a pass to the left wing or the 
right wing, okay? And the left wing is always gonna be in the high slot here, okay? Because these two are generating speed and these are the players that are gonna be prepared to go down low. Now we can switch to, it just depends. So if the right wing's down here, dumps it in to the center, okay? Right wing can go here, then the left wing can switch down here and we can use that cycle. Um, and it's a little confusing. I will explain it more and we'll show you how to do this. But um, it's just very important because these players, mostly center and right wing will be down low, left wing will be a high slot, and these D will be up here while making sure no one's coming back here. And then we have the motion regroups, D to D stretch, or the stretch. That's when D1 gets the puck and strong side options are taken away. He or she passes to his or her partner. And see, the center swings away to the wide side. And once that pass is made, D1 needs to sink back to mid ice to protect his or her partner, not leave the, them alone. Because a turnover could be made and it will provide an option to D2 to make a pass if they're forechecked. And D2 passes up to the right wing or left wing, who is off the boards and is available in the middle of the ice. So take a look. D1 will make that pass. We'll skate, stop here. Okay, then D2 will skate up a little bit. So you can either give that left wing who has speed or the right wing. Okay, and then right wing will chip it in, then left wing will get, will get it, and then center will be the support option. So if it's chipped in this area, and we'll discuss more. Okay, this is, I'm discussing four checks too, but just in this scenario, you wanna make sure D1 stops here, D, or D1 makes a pass and stops here, because D2 may have to make a pass, but we wanna to try to avoid that. And then D2 will skip a little bit, make a pass to the left wing, and then center's behind will go in the zone, and then or the D2 can make the pass to the right wing and they go in the zone and set up offensive jude opportunity or use the four check. Okay, and then we have the motion regroup D to D flat pass. Um, so that's when D1 passes the D2 and the opponents are four checking. Uh, forces one option, which is make a flat pass to the center with speed in the wide lane. Okay, an effective option is a motion regroup sequence includes the centers tends to build up a lot of speed because they're, they, you know, they're coming back and they're using their strides and their cross, they're using the crossovers to generate that speed. And they can often enter the offensive zone easily because the D are not going to, they're going to have trouble with that speed handling it. And usually available when opponents use a one, two, two, four check, which I'll talk about in the four checking chapter, and they lock the center of the ice, it leaves the backside open. So as we take a look in this scenario, so D1, again, is going to make a pass to D2, and then D1 is going to stop here after that pass is made, D2 is going to skate up, pass to that center that has that speed, left wing will have be another option at that speed, and they enter the zone. Now they can use the four check, you know, we have, we'll explain a little more when we get there, but provide, when we always don't want a four check, we always want to get in the offensive zone. But in this zone, we're folk in this chapter, we'll mostly focus on the off the, the new, you know, the regroup in the neutral zone. So in this case, like I said, D1's going to make the pass to D2. After the pass is made, keep skating, stop here, D2 will skate up, provide that center, and that center will go in. But we got to make sure the center's not open. If covered, then the left wing is open. And if that left wing is not open either, we have to pass it in the right wing. And if neither option or forward, we're going to have to cross the V2, we'll have to cross the blue line and skate it in, okay? And dump it in, and the forwards will forecheck. Or D2, D2 can make a pass to D1 again and look for options, and then they can set up that replay. But it depends on time and space. That's what's going to matter. These will always not be the scenario. And then we got the hinge play. So that's when D, D1 passes D2, and then D1 slides back to mid ice, okay, um, to, to support their partner. And D2 moves up the ice and looks to make a pass. Um, and with no options, D2 makes pa a pass back to D1, who is behind and in the middle of the ice. So that way that's a support option. And D1 moves the puck quickly to the center who has a lot of speed built up in the outside lane. Remember using crossovers and generating that speed um, and using that quick feet motion. The left wing could be available in the middle of the ice as well. And D1 performs a skating hinge like I said. We'll skate up, okay, and accelerates up the middle of the ice while looking for options. So if we take a look in this scenario right here, we have D1, okay. Well, let me get my mouse. Sorry about that. But D1 
one, okay? D one's gonna make that pass when they're there, okay? Then we'll curl up and stop here. D two will skate up, okay? Then make that pass back to, to D one, and D one has the option of making that pass to the center, who has that set, that speed built up. Okay, the center curls. Gotta make sure they're on this side before making the pass, or the D one can make the pass to the left wing, and then go to the right wing. It just depends. Okay, that's that stretch player too. We can look at, but usually. If none of these are open, you look for the right winger. Um, but if none of them are open, the defense D1 in this case will have to skate up the puck or pass back to D2 and we'll have to restart this play. Okay, and then we have the stretch pass. So that's when D1 and D2 passes are made in the neutral zone. And then, well, at that play, the center exchanges with the wing. And then in this play, the right wing has the option of moving out higher behind the out opposing D. So within this, the center swinging lower provides D with an alternative safer option if the stretch play isn't there for an option. And the right wing must time it. We always have to time it. Hit the open space behind the opposition D when D2 is ready to make a pass. So as we said, D1 is going to make a pass to D2. We'll stop here again in the middle. D2 may have to make a pass back. It just depends on the situation. But in this situation, the right wing is going to be available because when you generate speed and move your feet and move in areas like what they're telling you on this diagram, that's going to open up that space. So we're going to be working on this. Okay, so usually D2 wants to make that pass to the right wing, and that right wing can go in. Left wing can come in with speed, and then the center comes in with speed. And we're making them very, very nervous and trying to make them they're trying to make a tight gap, but they will control the speed, which they will be focused on the puck, and that makes them unpositioned. So that's why we want to do that. So the D1 will make the pass D2, D2 skates, makes the pass to the right wing, and then left wing and the center will come in, and they can set up their play in the offensive zone. And then we have some videos for you here based on the neutral zone counters and regroups just to sum it up. Um, a couple of them just explain from different – coach's perspective. Just make sure you watch these two because they're very important. Um, and if there's any questions, guys, please don't get a, please do not hesitate to get a hold of me. Okay. Because I have office hours and you can give me a call if you need to, you can email me and we'll communicate. And throughout the whole course, you can do this. Okay. Great work guys. And I will see you next class.